I, I really appreciate you you taking the time and I want to get into a little bit of like the details of this film, but then also yourself to start out because mm -hmm. you recently made your directorial debut. And I was curious if that changed your approach to this type of film or gave you a different perspective, knowing what it's like to be on the other side of the camera. Oh, thank you for, yeah, that's such a generous question to ask. And definitely it did change my point of view of what actors do on set and what directors are worried about on set, because I've always, I would say, had that wrong. What I thought actors were doing on set was less valuable. And what I thought directors were doing on set was worrying about their actors. And I realized those two things were wrong. What actors do on set is so valuable. And I only learned that from seeing the other side of it, seeing the two actors who were in my movie, Julianne Moore and Finn Wolfhard, pour their heart out every day, bring their emotions to something. I, I, it's what I have been doing on sets as an actor, but never appreciated until I saw somebody else do it. And so being on set of a movie like Manodrome, where the focus was so much on me and my acting because the part is so extreme and it's such a central kind of character movie. Um, I learned to kind of give myself a break and think that, oh yes, what I'm doing is you know, let's say maybe has some value in the arts in some big way. So I don't have to feel like I'm just doing something vain and self-centered. And then I also have this other feeling, which is like, oh yes, I could feel totally comfortable just using myself in every possible base way, because that's what's going to make this good. And I've kind of always understood that intuitively, but never felt totally comfortable with it. And the other thing that I learned, which I mentioned is like, just um, seeing what directors are worried about. Again, I always assume directors are walking around between takes being angry at me that I did a bad job because I'd be so self punishing during the take, after the takes, I, I missed that moment or shoot, I wanted to do this thing, I couldn't do it. Or I wasn't engaged in the moment in that particular take. And I assume the directors all knew that too and were walking around furious, but they weren't. And I realized that too, because again, Julianne Moore is like the greatest, you know, actress in the country would say to me, oh, I missed that take. Whereas I thought this was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. And so I realized act directors aren't walking around just being mad at me. And so again, in a movie like Manodrome, where the movie is so focused on my particular acting job, um, I let myself off the hook of worrying that I was doing a bad job. That sounds like it was very creatively freeing then to take on something like this. It's exactly that, exactly freeing. Knowing how the process works as an outsider uh, is always freeing, I think. Yes, and also compassion for actors, which I always, always, always have had, was just increased. The best advice I ever got on a movie set was this director, Greg Matola, who was directing Adventureland that I was in. And I had like a little minor panic attack during a take and I kind of just froze. And I asked the director, can we stop for a minute? And I brought him to the side and I said, I think I just had a panic attack and I ruined the scene. And he said, well, you didn't ruin the scene. And I saw you were a little uncomfortable, but I'd be surprised if you didn't have a panic attack in every take, what you're doing is like this emotionally explicit thing. You're using yourself, your face is on camera. It's like, I would freak out for one second as an actor. And I, that was the best advice I ever got because it allowed me to kind of take the burden off myself for worrying that I was gonna screw something up that was gonna screw the movie up. Yeah, when you, when you talk about kind of that intensity of the experience, it's hard to think of a movie as intense as this in some key moments, both in the domestic scenes, in the scenes you share with Adrian Brody. Have you become more prepared to dive into something like that because of past experiences you've had? Or is, was this in a new beast entirely? I've, I, I always prefer things like this. They just don't come around as frequently as, you know, more kind of how to describe it casual kind of roles yeah because they're not made that much um but my background is in theater as an actor and um i write and act in plays for myself and the characters are close to this level of um drama and intensity um but just no one sees them you know because they're plays and uh but so this is that would be the kind of role i would create for myself something at that with that ex extreme uh, at that extreme level. And so I'm very comfortable, frankly, more comfortable in roles like this than in kind of casual roles. Because when I'm in a kind of casual role that appears like myself, I'm often just worried that I'm inauthentic, you know, because you're so self-conscious because it's so similar to you. Whereas this, you're like basically in somebody's nightmare scenario. And in some ways, like that's 
more comfortable place to be in because it's not like there are these very strict rules that you have to adhere to about how your character would behave because no one knows how your character would behave. It sounds like there's a distance that you appreciate in the roles that you take on. That's a perfect way to put it. Uh, because he's not like me and doesn't react like me, I could be completely artful with it. You know, I find it pretty stifling when you're playing a character that's so similar to you to really dig into your creative imagination because it's something you wind up, because it's similar to what you're doing all day by yourself, you know? And so with a movie like this, and I've been in a few movies where I got this kind of, let's say leeway or creative freedom, uh, I just have this thought every day on set, like, oh, this is the gift. This is why I would do maybe a commercial movie that didn't exactly, that I didn't exactly feel engaged with. It's for this reason. It's so I get to do this, which is like being in the greatest acting class in the world, but also it's in a movie that people will see. How lucky is that? No, absolutely. It sounds like there's that, and it's the cliche phrase of one for them, one for me, but this sounds like this was the one for you. Yes, exactly. And sometimes the one for them is also one for you. Like I've had yeah. unbelievably great experiences in that world too. But, you know, you know, sometimes you feel like, wait, what, you know, what, what is the end goal with the particular thing? And then when you're acting in something that feels totally real and authentic and like you're stretching your creative brain, you think, oh, right, this is what I assumed I would be doing all the time when I was in drama school. When you're in drama school, you do, you know, Greek plays and you play Stanley Kowalski at 16 years old. And then you get out of acting school and you're auditioning for a Trident gum commercial where you're trying to like show that you're smiling, you know, into the camera, but you know, your teeth are not going to be good enough to get the part. And so you just, you have this assumption of what acting is and the reality of what acting is are normally like never in accordance except for like times like this. I just had a nightmare vision that this movie would be the most terrifying re-edit into a Trident gum commercial possible. Yes, yes, exactly. I wonder, you could probably actually keep a lot of it, but it would be one of these like, you know, bastardized art house versions of, yeah, it would maybe it would be also like a commentary on the dangers of gum or- Yeah, you know. yeah. I wanted to ask specifically about one scene and it was the tape scene where you wrap the tape around your face. Oh yeah. I had thoughts of like where I had remembered similar things from, but I was wondering how that came to be and what the origin point of that was. When I first read the script, it's, it really read to me as somebody who had transcribed a nightmare. And so Ooh. there were all of those things, there were all of these things in the script that were like, um, I would say logically not totally explainable to me, but emotionally felt real. And so like a guy who's struggling with his own identity, with his own masculinity, with his own face, this is something we probably all struggle with to a certain degree because it's part of our ego and vanity. But this is somebody who's experiencing it at like an unbelievably extreme dangerous level. And so like the thing with the tape on the face was like, oh yeah, of course this person would do that. This person who hates himself, of course, would put tape all over his face, not only because He's trying to distort the very thing that he resents, which is his own appearance, but um, it's also painful. And this is somebody who is self-harming. And so, oh, this is exactly emotionally realistic to me. But if I tried to explain, you know, to an outsider why he's doing this particular thing, you know, you kind of struggle up against it, which is this beautiful thing about, you know, when you can read a script that feels emotionally honest, even if it's somehow occasionally illogical. No, absolutely. I think that emotional honesty is is kind of the core of this, where it's very very painful but there's there's a truth to it nothing even as it has its surreal moments there's that truth to it and I was wondering were there truths you discovered in the process of going through this that you maybe didn't have at the beginning yeah that is such a good question and the answer is yes but I've never been asked it before and I can't think of an exactly no that's okay scene but it, it's exactly right it's that this happens all the time by the way with actors halfway through doing a movie, you go, oh, now I finally get it. Or halfway through doing a play, you know, you have six months left on a run that's a year long. You're like, oh, now I finally get it. I wish I could do those six months again. It's exactly that. It's because when something is written from a place of unconscious, when, a, when something is written from the unconscious, uh, sometimes it's not helpful to kind of discuss it, it with, you know, regular uh, uh, language. And so as you're physically experiencing the thing, suddenly that makes sense. 
there were things in this movie that like suddenly the character is walking outside of his car and he's going to bash somebody's head in. And you're like, wait, why did he come out of the car? And why is he targeting that particular person? Or why is he in the bathroom getting into a fight with this particular innocent person? And when you're acting in it, you're like, oh, right, of course, because he just experienced like this severe repression of his own rage in scene X. And so, of course, scene Y is going to have that manifest in some bastardized way of like, you know, feeling ashamed from you know, his girlfriend who's pregnant and feeling worried about having a baby and like attacking somebody in the mall bathroom. Of course it makes sense because that shame leads to an expression of violence that mm. can only, that can be the only solution to that shame. I was very interested in kind of the, I'll say shades of masculinity that you've taken on. I think of Mark in the social network. I think of Vivarium. I think of this what is it that draws you to these types of characters who are struggling with identity and themselves and it manifests in often very hurtful or violent ways to others around them? Um, yeah, I mean, I I grew up like, you know, as like a, I was a small kid in a, you know, in an environment where like kind of jocks were celebrated. I mean, probably like most people on earth yeah. I'm speaking for, but I didn't grow up in like an artsy kind of school. And so the people that were celebrated were all the people that made me feel like, you know, just inadequate. And so I could understand exactly these feelings of struggling with your own masculinity against expectations you have for yourself, that society has expectations. And so to me, these kind of roles feel incredibly uh, natural and intuitive you know, I I do these other movies. Now you see me, we're about to do like a third one. These are like, you know, uh, commercial movies and plot kind of driven movies. But the character I play, which I got to help create because the script was kind of in its, in its nascent stage when they first came to me for it. Like I wanted to play like this kind of very confident showman mm -hmm. because it's not what I normally feel in life. And so when I'm playing those roles, A, they're just a blast to do, but B, those are kind of more of a struggle for me to kind of figure out, wait, why would this person have so much confidence? Why would this person think that they're so great? Because that's not like usually the mindset of an actor. Usually the mindset of an actor is usually coming from a place of pain and adequacy and they need the roles to make them feel whole. And so those are more of the struggle for me and more, or like, and really less intuitive as opposed to the movies you just mentioned which feel quite personal and seamless. No, oh, that's very interesting because I did want to ask about Now You See Me Briefly. I won't have you do a magic trick or anything but you. when you're does, does doing that type of part of it help you get into the confidence of it? And and what kind of was this new movie like as an evolution from all the work that you were talking about? Yeah, uh, well, thank you so much for saying that. And yeah, when I, I discovered that I don't like um, actively pursue what you would call like method acting, which is where mm -hmm. you kind of like almost treat the circumstances as reality. And I found that not a lot of actors do, or some do it kind of performatively, but in a way that doesn't feel exactly real. And for me, doing those movies, Now You See Me More Than Anything, is our, our, like the furthest I go in terms of like, I would say, feeling like the character, because I am an actual performer as my job, and the character is a performer, and yet the character is this very confident performer, and I'm a very unconfident performer experiencing self-doubt. I don't watch any of the movies I've been in. I try to avoid still frames of the movies because I don't want to see myself because I'm just, you know, encumbered with my own anxieties about myself. And so getting to be a performer that feels good about himself and actually be on a movie set where I am performing is like, I would say the most con most method I felt. I walk around almost arrogant on these sets. I love, I love them so much and I'm so desperate for to do a third one because it's like, the only times I could kind of lower my antidepressant dosage because I feel so at ease and comfortable with myself as a performer because the character is. And so in some ways, like, you know, the way I would describe like method acting would almost be in the reverse that the character is making you feel certain something about yourself. And that's what it is for me in those movies. Whereas a movie like Manodrome, which appears to audiences probably like a far more difficult kind of role because the movie's so intense to me feels much more like in my comfort zone or or not comfort because it's not comfortable, but in like a place I am familiar with. 